Hi everyone, this is Rabbi Jaffe. I thought that, especially during these anxious times when we may not be able to come to the synagogue as much as we would like, I might send out this Shabbat message with five minutes of Talmud having to do with our current situation. I hope this is helpful. Today I'd like to talk about the Jewish ethic of pikuach nefesh, which means guarding one's life. It is the ethic that mandates that all other mitzvot and all of Judaism may be broken in order for us to prioritize life. It comes from the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, and here I'll read uh, from the text of verse 5. Ushmartem et chukotai ve'et mishpatai asher ya'aseotam ha'adam ve'chaye bahem. says, You shall observe my decrees and my laws, which you should carry out and by which you should live. Now, the rabbis interpret this to say that if the laws and decrees are done so that one may live, that life is sacrosanct, and that if any of these laws are in any way blocking life from continuing, then they may be abrogated. So, for example, in Bikuach Nefesh, if someone has a heart attack on Saturday, even in the most observant Orthodox communities, Ambulances will be called, people will drive, people will break Shabbat in any way possible they need to in order to save a life. And so here we're talking a lot about this these days as we're trying to balance our own priorities as a congregation with our overall priority of ensuring the safety and security of our congregants. So for this, we look to the wisdom of the Talmud, the book of Jewish commentary, which builds upon the Torah. So here in discussion of Yom Kippur in the Talmud, they elaborate upon this idea. It says, what do we do on Yom Kippur, the holiest of days, if a mitzvah needs to be broken? It says, in the case of one who's seized with a life-threatening illness, causing this person unbearable hunger pangs and impaired vision, where this person thinks that they will die, one may feed him, and may feed them impure foods. That is, if someone on Yom Kippur is going to die if they do not eat, not only can you feed them on Yom Kippur, but you can give them a bacon shrimp surprise in order to do so. Now, of course, if you've got other items around, that might work better, but you get the idea. But what if you're not sure if the person's going to die? What if there's only a chance that someone will be harmed? What do we do about the mitzvot in that case? It continues to say... Well, with regard to one who suffers pain in his throat, one may place medicine inside his mouth on Shabbat, although administering a remedy is prohibited on Shabbat. There are 39 types of work that are associated with the building of the temple in Jerusalem and the Mishkan, the sanctuary in the wilderness. And those are the actions which are traditionally interpreted as work and forbidden on Shabbat. Here, administering a remedy is given as one of them, but you are able to break Shabbat in order to do so, even if you're not sure that the person's life is in danger, but if there's just a chance. The Talmud builds upon that further, giving the example of if there is a rock slide and you're not sure if someone is underneath it, are you allowed on Shabbat to start digging even though that would traditionally be prohibited? It says, when a rock slide fell and there is uncertainty whether someone is in there, until the debris or whether uh, he is even found to be in there, there is uncertainty. If you don't know if he's alive or dead, or if the person there is Jewish or not Jewish, doesn't matter, you clear the pile to make sure that no one is underneath them. In other words, even if there is complete uncertainty, as if there's any need at all, if there is a threat upon life, we break everything else in order to save it. And so that brings us back to our overarching theme here, that you can see us as a congregation sending multiple communications out, trying on the one hand to support the community in our goals to serve as a center of Jewish life and learning, but prioritizing at all times the protection of life as being sacred and sacrosanct, and that all other mitzvot come after that. And so with that, on this Shabbat, I very much wish that you and your family have a time of health and happiness together, perhaps even in this time of great anxiety, your time together in your homes gives you a deeper sense of connection to one another. 
We very much look forward to seeing you here at the congregation when the time is appropriate and when we can guarantee your health and safety. We look forward to celebrating Shabbat on Friday night, as well as to a bat mitzvah tomorrow with one of our families, and we will continue to monitor the needs and the goals as we try to prioritize life among all of our other mitzvot. Shabbat Shalom.